Good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? Awesome, awesome. This weekend, we honor all our military members who have died while serving in the U.S. forces. It was a former president uh, quoted this. He said, our nation owes a debt to its fallen heroes that we can never fully repay. Isn't that the truth? Amen. Amen. Well, we, um, uh, we wrapped up the school year. Um, all, all the kids said a big amen, and all the teachers said an even louder amen. Come on, where are my teachers at? Can we put our hands together for the teachers? Hey, teachers, we, we appreciate you. We sure do. We're going to jump right in the message today and, 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 and wrap up the series as we jump into a new series starting next week. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says to write down the vision, write it clearly on clay tablets so whoever re- reads it can run to tell others. So make this vision so clear that when people read it, they got it, and not so, just so they can get it, so they can tell others, listen, a clear vision helps people to, to, uh, to run where others walk. Amen? Yeah, yeah. So at Highlands Church, on this series, we wanted to call it This Is Us. And this is why I, I wanted to name it this. We want to let you know who we are and where we're going. And, and this is, these are some things that mark our church, things that, we're, that we're, we're known for. At Highlands Church, we help people, if you know the vision, help me say it, we help people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. That's right. That's what we do. Um, let, let me say that one more time, just so you know it. It's we help people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Our four values here at Highlands are we love God, we love people, we pursue excellence because you can never get there. It's, it's not a rival. It's, it's a pursuit, right? We pursue excellence. And, and we choose joy. Why? Because joy is not a feeling. Joy is a choice. Come on now. Joy is, is a choice. Now, I was having a great uh, a conversation with my, my daughter yesterday, and we were just talking about different churches. And, and I said, you know, churches are like Baskin Robbins. There's 31 flavors, and they're all good to, to different people. I mean, yes, I know that, 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 that Neapolitan has that strawberry uh, vanilla chocolate. I was that weird kid that always would, I couldn't do, I couldn't combine them. Like the world would come to an end. I just had to pick one. You know what I'm saying? And I get it that there's some churches that, that kind of blend some, but, but they're not all 31 flavors. And so what I want to do today is tell you about a flavor that we're, we're actually known for in the community. We've been known for this for about, about a decade and a half since we've planted. Um, you know, a church, the, the best churches are not like Golden Corral. You're not going to have a good steak and good seafood and fried chicken. Come on, somebody, because it's not good, right? Uh, no offense if you work at Golden Corral, but but uh, uh, you got to know your lane. You got to you got to if you don't do it, if you don't have a specialty, you'll never do anything special, and that'll work in any area of your life. Okay, at home and at work. But, but this, this is kind of the things that, that we, we, we do well. And, and, and here's some different flavors of church. And, and they're all good. It, it's, just, it's just different, okay? If you want a two and a half hour worship service where we play somber music, hey, that's a good thing. That's cool. That's just not us. And that's okay. Don't look at me. Don't get uncomfortable. It's cool. That's just not us. All right, we were, we're not going to worship for two and a half hours. Actually, I'm going to encourage you to worship every day of the week. So you don't have to feel like you have to get it all out on Sunday morning and check the box. Right? If, if, you want, if you want somber music and something sad and we just kind of linger there for about, I don't know, an hour and a half. This is not that church. That's good. That's just not here. All right. If you want, if you want life giving relationships, and you're going to meet some of your best friends here in church, this is a good church to be in. If you want to, if you want to be discipled and and be equipped to know God on your own time and be equipped and to grow spiritually, this is a great church to be in. If you want, if you want your pastor to be the only voice that you hear, and and you're you're not going to grow unless he speaks into your life, this is not a good church. But if you want me to help resource you, this is a great church. Just different styles, different approaches. They're, go- they're all good. It's just that this is, this is us. If you want an amazing kids ministry, this is a great church to be at. Why? Because we got a bounce house today. 
You know, I heard some kids, well, as they were driving up with mom and dad, they were, they were walking up in the, the parking lot. I heard them, oh, yeah. And I'm like, they don't understand that I'm the, I'm the big kid. I'm like, oh, yeah, bounce house. You know, if, 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 you, if you want practical teaching that you can actually apply on Monday, it's a great church, right? It's just different styles, different things, but this is us. And this is the thing that we are known for. And, I, and by the grace of God, we will continue to be known for. And it's this, it is, <laughs> I, I love this about our church, but I love it when people say this, man, you can, you can feel the love that you have for one another when you come into this place. Like you, gen, that's one of your values and you really do f- feel the fact that, man, you, you guys just love each other. Like we say it like this, we love everybody and you're next. That's just, this is how we roll. From, way, from day one, a prayer of mine would be, and I know it sounds, may sound odd to you, but a prayer of mine was that people would meet their, their friends that they go on vacation with in the lobby of our church. I know it sounds kind of strange. Don't you pray for a mass revival? Actually, we're not dead. We don't need to be alive. We're already alive. Yeah, our country needs a spiritual awakening, but our church does not need a revival. Why? Because we're already alive. Thanks very much. But what I do would love to see is people connecting and laughing and their kids playing in the lobby and out on the, on the property. That's when you know you're winning in life is when you look, you can't wait to get to church because your people are there. Your friends are there and small groups now are starting to sit with one another on the rows and it's not just something that you do during the week, it's, it's people that you look forward to meeting with on, on Sunday morning. I, I, I had dinner with a guy that used, to, that used to be here. They were transferred with work out of town. He was coming back through town on a, on a work-related trip. So we met up and had, had dinner. This is a while back. And he goes, man, Highlands is awesome, but Highlands ruined us. I'm like, what? why is that? And he said, because our best, our best friends are still in Georgia. Our, our, and we, we pray that we're, we're meeting new friends, and, but it's, it's, we had so much fun in church. And I don't know if that's your history, but that is now your present reality if Highlands is home. And, and at the end of your life, at the end of your life, What's going to matter is not the ladders you've climbed or the money that you've acquired or, or the stuff that, that, that you accomplish. It's this. At the end of your life, number one, you'll want to see Jesus. And then number two, write this down. All you have at the end of your life are the lives that you changed and the people that you got to do it with. The older I get, man, my, my value, I, I, I just, I don't chase stuff. I don't chase goofy stuff anymore. At the end of your life, all that matters, all that matters, all that matters are the lives that you changed and the awesome people that you got to run beside while you were doing it. That's it. And that's why we at Highland Church are very intentional about creating a safe place for people to connect to God and connect with one another. And many of us don't realize the importance of people that we choose to surround our lives with. And it's so important. Here's a promising truth. Every single one of us here today, you are one relationship away from a better marriage, fulfillment, overcoming an addiction. Come on. Uh, Getting in better physical shape. No amens. Okay. (laughs) A better financial shape, becoming a stronger leader. You are one relationship away from all of that happening. Now, that's the promising truth. But here's the scary news. With some of your current friend groups, you're headed toward an addiction. You're headed toward an arrest. Or even worse, you're headed to the same lukewarm relationship with God that your friend group has. That's scary. That's, that's scary. Today I want to talk to you about the relationships that you cannot afford to have in your life. You, you just can't have them with you. And I want to talk to you about some relationships that you can't afford to miss out on. All right? Now, I've been doing... So when, 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 when my pastor friends have me in, they, they call me... That's the relationship guy. So this is my wheelhouse, okay? I get passionate about a ton of stuff, but the thing that I'm really excited about today is I've seen this work 
so consistently throughout the years. I've seen it with student ministry. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Right? Now, we as parents, we know that to be true. Hey, guess what? Middle-agers, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Elderly people, no, they're set in their ways. Oh, no, 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 no. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. It works in every age and every stage of life. I've read so many articles in the past few weeks saying that there is this, and, and this past week has almost accelerated it. It's an epidemic of loneliness that's happening around the world at every age and every stage. The latest statistics, I shared this statistics a while back, that 68% of people in Great Britain have, uh, they have, uh, say that they have a, uh, a state of loneliness is now their normal. Isn't that crazy? 68% of of Great Britain feels lonely. But right now, the number is now one half, five out of 10. One half of Americans say they feel lonely right now. How is that possible? We have social media. Because it's not real. It's not real. And it's telling on itself in the condition of our souls the condition of our real relationships. Um, Listen to this. That means, this is just half of adults. That means half of that kindergarten classroom is lonely. What? Half of that elementary school feels all alone. Now we would say that about middle school and high school because we understand those can be some trying years. But watch, studies are now showing that half of middle age and elderly and young people, no matter how affluent or baroque they are, five out of 10 are lonely. We've got an epidemic of loneliness. And so the medical community has even discovered that we do not need friends simply for happiness. We need friends for our health. So this is kind of what I've been, this is, this is, this is a how theory, that if you need friends to be healthy, if you get some friends and go to Krispy Kreme together, come on, somebody, <laughs> that I, I think that God will bless it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I think it'd be a lot of fun. All right. For time's sake, let's do this. Let's categorize. Let's categorize our friend group based upon two categories. And, and again, this is not an exhaustive list. But first is this. It's casual, friends, casual friendships, and they're based on circumstances. Okay? They're, they're same workplace, same classroom, same, same neighborhood, same street, same, uh, same sports team. Then, then that's, and that's cool because that can lead to the second category of people is this. It's close friendships. Now, close friendships are based upon shared commitments. Shared commitments. You can't simply be close to everybody. You, you, you just can't. No, no, yes, I can't. No, 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 you can't. Your close friends should not be accidental. And let me just, let me just teach you. Parents, you pick your kids' friends. Well, I don't want to be controlling. No, it's called leadership. <laughs> pick your, you, you don't just let them just go out there and pick your friend. No, because the wrong friend will pick your good kid. So you help pick your kid's friends. Why? Because they must be cho- chosen wisely. Uh, the closer someone is on your life, the greater their impact, positive and negative. Not just negative, in a positive way as well. And this is exactly what Jesus had going on in his life. Listen, listen. Jesus loved everybody. He fed 5,000. He trained 120. He discipled 12. He mentored three. He, he did not withhold his love from anybody. If you bumped into him in the, on the street, he would love you. He he would love the unlovable. He loved everybody, but he did not invest in everybody. He blessed everybody with his life, but he trained 120. But he did not train, he he couldn't train thousands, but I can train 120 and I can disciple 12. And can I just tell you, Peter, James, and John were the only three that he brought to the Garden of of Gethsemane. They were the only ones that went to the Mount of Transfiguration. He, they, he, they were the only ones, and I also remember this story. They were the only ones that Jesus brought in close when he healed J- Peter's mother-in-law. 
Like, that's interesting. Pastor, are you saying that Jesus played favorites? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. He loved everybody. He trained 120. He discipled 12. He mentored three. Jesus spent the maximum amount of time with those who would bear the maximum responsibility. All right, can I help you today? With a smile on my face, are y'all ready? Hey, it's summertime, y'all ready? Okay, all right, let me encourage you to stop wasting your time with people who don't value your time. Well, that's not very Christ-like. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Can, well, pastor, how can I tell if someone doesn't value my time? All right, easy. It's actually an easy answer. Did they follow your advice from the last conversation or are they still complaining about what they allow in their life? Say a lot, think on that. We keep having the same conversation, then you keep throwing your pearls before swine. Move on to the next person who wants God's word. Okay, you're not gonna smile at me today. Okay, keep it. King Solomon knew that choosing their friends wisely could make or break someone's future decisions. Proverbs 12, 26, a righteous person is cautious. Everybody say cautious. Hit the brakes. They're cautious in friendship. Why? Because the ways of evil people can lead them to do wrong. So if I'm, I rarely made a dumb decision growing up all by myself. Right? Right? Here's a quick list, not an exhaustive list, list, but a quick list of people who do not qualify to make your friend group. Right? Number one, write this down, the arguer. Now, when I read this list, immediately faces are going to come to your imagination. Aren't you glad that they're not here? Aren't you glad that you're okay and perfect? Okay? The arguer, these folks are always against something. Right? And wherever they go, they cause conflict. They, they, they're, why? Because they're toxic, plain and simple. They, they just, if, man, it's pretty outside. Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty hot out here. That's what the sun usually does. It heats things up. You know? I, I, it's, it, it doesn't matter what. They can complain in Maui, bless God. You know what I'm saying? Proverbs 12, uh, 20, verse 3. Any fool can start an argument. Not my word, God's word. The honorable thing is to stay out of them. Everybody say, stay out. Yeah. Don't you mean pray for the person who starts? No, he says, they are fools. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. I'm going to show you that this, this list of people that don't make the cut, that yes, we can pray for them, but we're going to pray for them at a distance. I'm trying to help you this morning. Enjoy your summer, everybody. Okay? Number two is this, the gossip. The gossip. Just keep looking straight ahead. Nobody knows I'm talking about you. Come on, send the gossip. The gossip. For many of you, I just cut half of your friend group right there. Right? Hate is a strong word, but did you know that God hates gossip? Gossip sabotages relationships. It damages someone's name. It hinders their target's influence. And God judges gossip very, very harshly. All right? What, what is exactly, what is gossip? Here's a good definition. Gossip is sharing damaging information when you're neither part of the problem nor the solution. Oh, I think I'm going to read that again. Gossip is sharing damaging information when you're neither part of the problem nor the solution. All right, the Bible tells us what to do for people that, that gossip. We should pray. No, it doesn't say to pray. It says stay away. Watch. Go, stay away from the gossips and pray. If you just insist on praying, yes, but stay away from them. They can't keep a secret and they're going to tell everything. Right? So what do we, what do, we do with with the arguer, man, stay away, stay out of it. What do we do with the gossip? Stay away. Why do you insist on bringing them close? You're, you're bringing pain into your life. Number three, I'm about to, sweetie. I'm about to preach it. So, oh, that's my wife, by the way, for all of our guests here today. I'm about to, I'll preach right to you. Give me an amen, sister. Yes, that's right. And number three, write this down, Sandra. It's the hothead. Write that down. 
<laughs> we got the arguing, we got the gossiping, we got the, we got the hothead. Can I get another amen? amen? Yes, you'll help me. Anger is contagious. Here's some practical advice for you this week. If you find yourself listening to talk radio or a podcast and you feel your blood pressure begin to rise, thus saith the Lord, turn the channel. Turn the channel. I just get, what do you think about that? I don't. Pastor, where do you stand on that? I just don't think about that. What do you think about, I, I, I genuinely choose, I, I, I just don't. Why? I'm too busy running after Jesus. And it's not like he's trying to escape. It's just, I know where he's going. He's, what, he's running to love people. I'm trying to keep up with him loving people. Right? Just turn the, thus saith the Lord, turn the radio. Right? New, and here's why. It, it, and, and I saw this this past week. Isn't it awful that we immediately, not we, but just the world jumped on bandwagons instead of going, wait, there are children that are not with us. Let's pray for those families. Let's pray for that. My God, can you imagine being a decision maker in that town? What do we do? What are we going to do? And the fear factor that's gone up. No, no, no. Everybody's got an opinion. News outlets know that hate sells. Yeah, your favorite channel. Thank you very much. They make more money when the consumer gets mad, not glad. All right. When, the, when their audience feels good about current affairs, they, they don't have an audience. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that that is, wake up, people. The, this, your phone, it'll, it'll populate to whatever you already believe. So pick a side, it will get you worked up. Why? Because that's how they make their money on you. Wake up. Humble yourself and pray. That's what we do best. Yes, get involved in the process. Yes, get involved in the community. But let's start with prayer. All right? Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24. What do we do with those hotheads? Don't make friends with them. Don't make, with a hothead person, don't associate with anyone easily angered. I'm not talking about people that, that trip up and make a mistake and get upset because they waited in line too long. Or they, I'm, I'm talking about someone who, that's just their, that's their MO. That's their flow. Is they're just hot-tempered. It says that you'll learn to be like them and you're not going to be able to change. So you're saying that a hot temper is contagious? Just like, yes, just like a fever. Just like a fever. Okay? So what do we do with with, with arguer? Stay away. What do we do with the gossip? Stay away. What do we do with the hothead? Stay away. All right? Number four is this, the immoral. The immoral. I, and I don't mean to make anyone feel uncomfortable, but I, I, I can't assume that, that, I can't assume anything anymore. You know, and thank God that we have such a broad stroke that we paint, and we have everyone from different backgrounds coming into the house of God here at Highlands. I'm so thankful for that. But you need to know God's got a better way of embracing sin for your life. Because sin, if you let it go, it's not going to cause you to have a bad day. It'll kill you. Right? A newsflash, this statement isn't directed to, to people who don't know God. When the apostle Paul wrote to a church that he planted in Corinth, and he says this, when I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in, well, here's one, sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or greed or cheat people or worship idols. I mean, you'd have to leave this world to avoid people like that. <laughs> what a great statement. He says, no, no, no. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer and yet, at the same time, indulges in sin, right? In sexual sin and greed and worship of idols and is abusive, a drunkard or cheats people. He says what? Don't even, what? Don't even go to Zaxby's with them. That's what he said. <laughs> like, don't even, don't go, go have lunch with, don't, don't eat with them. Isn't it interesting? 
What do we do with people that are arguers? Stay away. Gossip, stay away. Hothead, stay away. Don't eat, don't be around these kind of folks. He's not talking about, now here, he's not talking about, man, I, the world, the world. He's like, no, people who say they belong to Christ and live as if they don't. You know, I, 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 if you really love someone, you would tell them, this is not God's best for you, bud. Ma'am, this is, God's got a better way. And you can tell who your real friends are when they step in and push you off the train track when, 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 when you're about to make some really harmful decisions. All right? The world is telling the church right now, quit telling me about your Jesus when your life does not look any, looks just like mine. That's what the world's saying. The world's crying out for the church to show them a different way. So we are to pray for everybody, but I'm concerned. You need to put some space between you and the, you can be kind. Jesus loved everybody, and we're going to continue to love everybody. But as having people close to our life, we are going to be very choosy because the Bible gives us permission to do that. All right? Are you ready for some? Real quickly, these are three friends that you can't live without. The first one is this. A close friend encourages, to, encourages to you to find spiritual strength in God. A, a real friend, a true friend will always point you back, hey, it's, it's in God alone that we put our trust. It's God alone that we put our hope in for tomorrow. It's in God alone that can forgive you of your sin. It's in God alone that can free you of that addiction. It's in God alone that can heal you. It's in God alone that can lift you. Come on, you put your faith in God. Compliments are kind, but stay at the surface level. Encouragement is deeper because it penetrates the heart. But the one who encourages another to find their strength in God changes the trajectory of that person's life. David was anointed to be the next king. David was a war hero, King David. Uh, the crowds would say, hey, King Saul, he's slain thousands. Oh, but David, he's slain tens of thousands. And King Saul was overwhelmed with jealousy and rage, so much so that he was, he was trying to kill David, his, his, the, the guy that was coming up to take the throne, wanting to kill his life. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 23, David learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son, Jonathan... He went to David at Horesh, and he helped him find strength in God. Isn't that great? Even people closest to God will be tempted. You will have opportunities to be discouraged. Everyone needs a friend like Jonathan that walks into their life, that runs into a burning building when everybody else wants out. Do you have someone like that? You can have someone like that here at Highlands. I'm so proud of all of the, the men and the women that I just, I just see you meeting each other's needs and being there when there's a sickness or when there's a crisis or you, you run, you run to that, you run to that, that need. Why? Because you love. Thank you, church, for being the church. Right? Here's a soapbox. I'm about to share a soapbox. Are you ready? Stop asking for social media friends to pray for you and pick up the stinking phone and pray. Well, they, they don't have my number. Well, then they're not your real friend. My real friends have my number. Okay. I, there's nothing about praying hands. Come on. <laughs> praying, praying, I mean, praying hands. But what I usually do, can I, can I just help you? What I usually do, and I, I've got a couple of pastor uh, group texts. I hate group texts, like the plague, by the way. But I'm, I'm in on a couple, and, and, and they'll say, hey, pray for this. I've got this. And guys start chiming in. Except for this guy. I'm the rebel of the bunch. I'm the rebel. What do I do? I call the person. I personally text the person. I got you, my man. I'm praying for your wife and your kids. Hey, I love you. Is there anything I can do? For Why? Because that's what friends do. There's nothing wrong with this on social media. But ain't nothing like this. 
And, and if you want to take it a step further, get on FaceTime. Let me see that. I want to see that your eyes. Don't you lie to me. How are you? How are you? I, um, I'm so blessed. I'm, I'm one of the richest people I know relationally. I, I, I called my buddy this morning, Pastor Craig Wendell in South Haven, Mississippi. It's his birthday. He's 102 years old. I'm so proud of the guy. <laughs> Craig, if you're watching, you're not. You're 78. Just kidding. <laughs> He's older than me. That's why I always give him a hard time. I just reached out, did a little recording. I know he's a busy guy. We're busy on Sundays. Did a recording. You need someone that celebrates you. You need someone that thinks, hey, I'm thankful you're, you're in my life. That's available here at Highlands Church. Number two, here's a friend you can't live without. A close friend brings out the best in you. Plain and simple, if your best friends aren't bringing out your best, they're not your best friends. Number three, and this is the most important, to have close friends, you must be a trusted friend. You will attract who you are. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. If you don't like your friend group, then you don't like you. Because the friends that you, are, that you have chosen are a reflection of who you really are. Well, that sounds like a self-help motto. Actually, it's in the Bible. King Solomon, wisest man that walked the planet. Proverbs 27, 19, a mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the friends he, he chooses. By the friends he chooses. Do you don't like your friend group? You don't like you. You can change that. I'm not talking about dumping people. <laughs> I'm talking about being more intentional about choosing, choosing the right people in your life. Amen? Did you guys get anything out of that today? Let's all stand up on our feet right now. I'm excited. Starting the summer on the right foot. Here's two action steps that I want to give you. Man, I, I, I need people in my life like that you talked about. People that, that point me back to God and give me spiritual strength. People that bring out the best in me. I mean, and I want to be that. How do I find them? Well, not just in church. It's kind of a blanket statement. This summer, starting June 8th, we have vital Bible skills. We call it VBS, but really it's just a, it's just a, a way of, of talking and connecting and helping one another and encouraging one another. That's happening, guys, on Wednesday night starting on June 8th. I'd love for you to be a part of that, okay? And here's the other thing. You sow into what you want to grow into. Be the friend that you're praying that walks into your own life. Let it start today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, thank you for being the friend. Your word says, Jesus, you stick closer than a brother. Thank you that you, when everybody walked out, you walked in. Thank you for not leaving us in our sin. But thank you for providing a way for us to come back to you. If there's anybody under the sound of my voice and you say, you know what, I need a friend like that. It starts with Jesus Christ, the Savior. It starts with the Lord. And that starts right now. So this is what I want to do. If you're here or you're joining us online right now and you say, you know what, I, I want that in my life. I want a real relationship with the Lord. I want forgiveness of my past. And I want to start that relationship with God today, right now. Or, or Pastor, I, I made that decision a while back, but today I want to renew that commitment to Jesus as I start off this summer. I want to walk with the Lord today. On the count of three, I want you to slip your hands up, slip it right back down. If that's you, say yes, please count me in on that prayer. One, two, three. Anybody in this place? God bless you. God bless you. Heavenly Father, I pray for them right now. Let, this is what I want you to do. Just repeat this prayer. Let your heart agree with it. You may not know what to say, but I'm going to help you with that. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making a way back to you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he rose from the dead because he died for my sin. Jesus, save me. I'm so sorry for my sin. I'm turning from my old ways. Holy Spirit, fill me today. Give me the power to make Jesus known through my life. Jesus, you are my Lord. In Jesus' name. 
Heavenly Father, I pray for relationships will begin to, to grow this summer. God, I pray that the relationships would thrive this summer. God, I, I, I ask you that the kids would be discipled, the parents would be discipled. Lord, that, that families would grow in love with you, grow in knowledge of you, and they look to the right, they look to the left, and they find other families that are doing it at the same time. Thank you that lifelong friendships happen through our church, in our hallways, in the parking lot, and yes, here, worshiping side by side side with one another. And I pray that happens today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may God give you his peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together. It's going to be a great summer. Amen.